Welcome to Interact. I'm Tim Farrell, your host for this evening, and this is your chance to interact with a remarkable group of young people from Gunn High School, the girls' gymnastic team, and their coach, Diane Carson Gibbs. For those of you who may, not, who may not know, Gunn recently capped a tremendously successful season, winning the Santa Clara Valley Athletic League Championship at both the varsity and junior varsity level, and capping an undefeated season by winning the Central Coast Section Championships. It's a remarkable team, according to their coach, one that doesn't have any superstars, but uh, incredible depth and uh, some very, very talented young people. Let's begin by meeting Coach Diane Carson Gibbs. Diane, welcome. Thank you. Um, I can say that uh, uh, having you is a, a great asset to Gunn, and I understand we're a little bit lucky that that uh, kind of worked out by chance. Can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about your background in gymnastics and how you came, came to be at Gunn High School? Well, I competed myself at the club level and also in high school. And once I got out of college, I really missed being around gymnastics and started coaching at Cross the Bay in, in um, Fremont, California. And from there, I decided that I really wanted to start judging. And so I started judging and met some people. And um, one of the, my <coughs> judging friends found out that there was a job here at Gunn and gave them my name. And that's kind of how it, it all started. That was four years ago. Okay. I imagine judging brings a rather different perspective to coaching. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? And, and, uh... Well, I really feel like I know what the judges are looking for. And the one thing I think we have on the team is we really know the rules. And I think my kids know the rules probably better than some of the, the other coaches out there because they really know what they need to do to get the scores. And I think that really helps out a lot. Yes, in a very highly subjective uh, sport uh, such as uh, your, your championship wins both at the uh, league level and at the CCS were remarkably close, were they not? Yes, we won CCS actually by a little more than a point. And uh, so that was very exciting. And uh, the teams that were there were very, very talented. So. It was down to the wire once again. Good. So knowing a little something about the judging and uh, had to help, help your players. Mm -hmm. I think I'll break the order a little bit and have you introduce the girls to us at this point because I'd like right away to get uh, their perspective on that question as well as some <laughs> of the others. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, Diane, could, you, uh, could we go around the group and meet your young gymnasts? Okay, I'll start with Rachel Allen. She's a junior. Rachel Hopkins is a sophomore. Bo Schnitz, another junior. It's Jen Taylor, she's a sophomore. Shelly Bine, she's a sophomore. Nina Wassow, she's a freshman. <laughs> Jackie Pratt, a freshman. Ann Cashmore is a sophomore. And Clara Ning is a sophomore. Do I see you drooling a little bit as you mentioned some of the years here? So this is a very, very young team as oh, well yeah. as being a very, very good team. So <laughs> yeah. we, you're going to spoil us all and we're going to see some great things for years to come, it sounds I like. I hope so. We've been quoted as being a dynasty, which we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Which, which is kind of exciting, yeah. Well, to be here on the ground floor of a dynasty uh, <laughs> is exciting. I yeah. might ask uh, if, um, does it, uh, I'm sure it does help to have a, a former judge as a coach, and could you tell, uh, could you give us an example of maybe a little bit of an edge that, uh, <laughs> that players uh, working with a coach who has judged uh, might get? Can you think of a specific situation? Uh, yeah. Nina, <laughs> Nina, Nina, please. Um, well, sometimes if we miss a skill in one of our teams, if we, you know, mess up or something, we know that we have to put it back in later if it happens to be something important because otherwise, you know, your score goes down more than if you just decide not to do it at all. So um, that's something that we usually try to remember during our teams. Good. Anyone else think of a specific moment? Yes, Rachel. Um, since she's a judge, she knows, like, what to put together and... My, especially like my beam routine, it doesn't have anything flashy, but she can tell me the moves that she, as a judge, knows that I can get the highest score at. So then she puts them together and that ends up being my best beam routine, even though it doesn't look that flashy. Good, good. In just a moment, we'll have a chance to look at some clips of Rachel and others, and perhaps, Dan, you could point out some of the specific things that, <coughs> that players would look for. Mm -hmm. One of the criticisms uh, that have sometimes uh, been made is that um, Having off-campus coaches is, is not a good thing, uh, that something is lost when uh, students don't have a, that daily, daily contact with a coach, you know, perhaps in the classroom, perhaps not, but at least on campus. Do you have any feelings about that, Diane, being an off-campus coach? I don't think it's affected us as a team at all. I, actually, I see them probably almost year-round. We had a, our first meeting was, what, like November, I think. And, so, and I've been to some other diving meets, and I have seen them around. And I, I don't think it's really affected us. I think that it's really difficult to find good gymnastics coaches, and to find one at the school would be really difficult to do. So they have to go to the outside and, and look. 
Okay. And once again, I turn to the girls and say, uh, <laughs> tell us something about, uh, about Coach Gibbs. Um, <laughs> what do you think of her? I guess it's time. This is going to be down and dirty time, Coach, so I don't know if maybe you want to cover yours. I'm sure you know. No, that's okay. Well, what, do think? what do we think of uh, Coach Gibbs? Well, um, okay, well, I think she, she's a serious coach because she, she knows what she's talking about all the time, but we generally just have, like, a lot of fun with her because she can be a little immature at times, <laughs> but I think we need that because we're around each other five months every day, and it's just, I think anything more would be too much pressure and I don't know we have a lot of fun that's the whole point of being on the team is to have fun good you think uh, coach gets being as young as she is uh, that has a perhaps <laughs> a bit of an influence but without without embarrassing your coach could you give me an example of her immaturity or give us an example of her immaturity <laughs> <laughs> One, I don't think I can say it suitable for, for family <laughs> television or should we let that one skip yeah <clears throat> yeah do you want to add something about your coach yeah, I just also um, I wanted to say that I think if we saw her every single day as not just a coach, but as in a, like you said, a classroom situation, it would give us um, less of an opportunity to become really like good friends with her, and we wouldn't consider her as much as, as a friend, as like a, a teacher, just another authority figure, which we don't really see her as. <laughs> <laughs> Well, while, while we're on the subject, you have broached it uh, at Gunn High School. Of course, we are proud of our academics as well as our athletics. This team finished, Coach, where in the, um, we do keep the academic rank. They, the they were rate. third in uh, academics with a 3-5, which is still very high. So Most impressive. Very the, impressive. The dumb jock stereotype does not apply <laughs> in this case. Um, a little something about, so we want to get to gymnastics, and we'll do that very, very quickly, but something about school um, that you want to talk about, your strengths as students, or... <laughs> Jackie, what's your favorite subject? Um, I like drama best because um, I like being on stage and performing. And I like English because um, we write and I like writing. I like most of my classes, actually. Good, good. Shelly, do you want to add something to... Well, I like my chemistry class especially because <laughs> no, really, I I have a really I have Dr. Thornburg and I think she's a really good teacher, and I hope she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> good. Anyone else want to add something about academics, and then we'll get down to the reason that we're here, and that your public is, I think, waiting. I'm sure, waiting to see. Well, this is a call-in show, and we'll be giving you a number to call momentarily. But, uh, Diane, let's get down to gymnastics. Um, we're going to start with the, uh, the, the bar, I believe, our first clip. Want to tell something about what a judge is looking for? And, uh... Well, on bars, it's, I've said this before, is probably the most difficult uh, event that there is. It takes a lot of strength and a lot of coordination. I think kids are either very natural at it or they struggle with it. And they're looking for, they have to have eight elements, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're doing a routine, it's a lot. Um, they have to do several different types of elements and um, in gymnastics in high school they have to have what's called um, a high superior which is the highest element and usually in a bar routine you're not going to see that whereas maybe on floor or beam you might see two or three high superiors so it's really difficult to get a good score. If you get a seven on bars I consider that a real solid score. Okay, I think we have up uh, Jen uh, Taylor with a uh a rather unfortunate ending uh, to this, as, uh, as Jen's uh, knee brace uh, would attest. So if you will, Coach, please, uh, if we could roll sure. that clip, and if you'll narrate for us, please. <laughs> That's good. Well, she's getting ready to mount. It's called a kip. And it's a very important element on bars. They have to go to both bars. They have to go to the high bar and the low bar. And I don't know what she's doing now. <laughs> there we go. Oh, here we go. And here she's doing what's called a free hip circle where her hips aren't supposed to touch the bar. <laughs> and this is the part where she's going to hurt herself on the dismount. So if you don't like this stuff, don't watch. <laughs> and there she goes down. At well, first we really thought it was her ankle. And then <laughs> found out later that she did tear a couple ligaments and is going to have surgery when, yeah, Jen? I'm having surgery after school's out. She was very disappointed, I think more so about the injury because she wanted to really compete on the next event, which was beam. And it's hard to be injured in the middle of a meet that's really that exciting. So. 
However, Jen did come back, did she not? Because isn't there a later dismount that gives new meaning to taking one for the team? Uh, well, no, what happened was we had an alternate, um, Jackie Pratt, who was there and who was not going to be competing um, beam, but because Jen hurt herself, she ended up competing and did very well for us. So it just shows you our depth. Good, good. Now, um, while we're on the subject of uh, these young ladies being very uh, unusual, um, gymnastics itself is an unusual sport in that uh, with uh, a lot of competition, girls get to know one another very well, don't they? And uh, so it's not, the rivalry is intense, but there's a bit of camaraderie and friendship, is there not? I, I don't think we have any rivalry or real major competition <laughs> between each other on the team. It's very much a team sport at our school. I think at other schools it may not be that way. But everyone's really more interested in the team score than they are on an individual. Yeah. Good. They have something Please. to say. Well, it's, it's not just between, like, our own team. It's also other schools because, I mean, I, every school that we've gone to, I've met new people, and I, I like, meet people that I've known for a long time because I've been in the sport for 12 years, and I, you keep your friendship, and people cheer each other on, and there's no real rival, rivalry against anyone. I don't know. That being said, I'm sure the uh, final moments of both the SCVALs and the CCS were probably pretty intense. I don't imagine you were yeah. ready to hand the trophy back, uh, were you, because no. St. No. Francis finished second or? No. No. <laughs> Third. <laughs> no, no, no intensity at all. I don't miss, witnessed by Diane. You want to add something, Jeff? Um, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that it really helps not to have competition between in the team. Like I noticed in other teams, um, ones at, at CCS, at, I'd see them practicing and they'd get in fights or they just, they were competing with each other and that really hurts the team because you need to stick together. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah there, there was a lot of contention between some of the teams that we watched practicing at CCS and I think that's one of the things that we benefit from is we get along so well. I mean, we all, I mean, we all see each other a lot at school and, and we do things on weekends sometimes. Okay. So. It's a good experience. I think our viewers will sense some of that, uh, the team support in some of our, our clips. We'll hear lots of shrieks. <laughs> when I go this, crazy. <laughs> Rachel, do you want to I was going to say, like, at one of the practices, we, as um, one of the teams was fighting, we were flying by it with a chalk fight. We were just fooling around like we always do. <laughs> but working out, too, we all just get along all the time. Good. Great. Well, this is a call-in show for you to interact, and our number is 856-1491. 856-1491. So... Please start the calls, and uh, as we get them, we'll, uh, we'll put you on, and you'll have a chance to talk to Coach Gibbs or uh, the gymnasts. And, um, and sorry. That's okay. okay. They never call me Coach Gibbs. All right. <laughs> they just call me yeah. Diane. <laughs> Let's look at a second clip while we're waiting for a phone call to come in. We have uh, Ann Cashmore on the bars. And once again, uh, <laughs> Diane, please, if you would uh, tell us what a, a judge would look for here and, and what Ann does particularly well. Well, Anne gets on the bars and gets off the bars. She doesn't make a whole lot of what we call execution errors, which is really bent legs or unpointed toes. Um, the only problem that we had really at, on bars was just a couple falls, and that was it. But she's really connecting some difficult moves, and then she does her dismount. And that's just about everything she needs to do. I think she got like a 7.55. Seven, seven, five, five. So that's a really good score. Okay. What would you as a coach uh, wanting to uh, help Ann improve based on that performance? What might you have pointed out? I maybe should have asked you this before the fact. <laughs> um, I really think what she needs to work on is probably a bar change, which means getting back down to the low bar. And, um, but it really isn't, it's really only a tenth for each of those little things that she's not doing, so it's not a lot. And she's gotten really strong, and I'm really proud of her because she's really pulled through for us at, at the kind of the last minute. So. It's really nice to see that. Good. And as you watch that tape, what, do you, uh, what, what goes through your, your head as you, as you watch yourself? Well, um, I was pretty pleased with that um, performance. There's always, I can always think of things as I see myself that I could have done better, of course, but um, it really doesn't help much to worry about that now. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, um, I, was, I guess I was pretty um, pleased with that overall. Um, I had a lot of fun, so Good. I think that was important. <laughs> Well, I have a question I'm dying to ask the uh, gymnasts, and uh, <laughs> what I'm impressed uh, is the, uh, the versatility that's required when you have a number of different events. A baseball player goes to the park every day, and he does his thing. He, he, he stands around in the outfield, uh, chews tobacco, uh, <laughs> goes, up, uh, goes up four times and takes his swings. Uh, we come to a gymnastics meet, and we're going to have to get way up on the bars, and we're going to have to walk that beam, which must look like a ruler turned on its <laughs> side when someone's up there. 
So the, I, the question I want to ask is, I suppose you, what your favorite event is, but I'm, I'm going to start with what is to me the more interesting question, and that is, what's the one when we get to the uh, gymnasium ready to go that way deep down I'm thinking, you know, there's something else I'd rather be doing this afternoon. I can say. Well, for me, beam is definitely oh, yeah. what, when I see the beam, you know, it depends. Some beams, like, they don't feel the same and they're just different. And um, beam, it's just, you can, it's one of those things where, well, for me, sometimes I'm not always consistent on it. You know, sometimes I might not stick what I want to in the warm-up and then it just kind of nerve-wracking waiting to get on the beam and see what's going to happen. And so for me, that's, it is the, beam. that's the hardest okay, one. Okay, good. I want to get some others, but we do have a caller on the line. Uh, Pat, go ahead, please. Pat, are you there? <laughs> Yo, Pat. <laughs> we'll, come, we'll come back. We have a little technical problem. We'll come back uh, to Pat. Let's go on. Uh, Who's up next, please? What's the, what's the one you dread when you come to the gymnasium? Um, well, I have to agree with Jen that balance beam really is, is a difficult um, event to do. And it's just, especially in competition, when you get that adrenaline rush and you're just on the beam, you just, I don't know, for me, I just, you know, start shaking, you know. It's just <laughs> really hard to stay on the beam. And you're just concentrating, just, you know, stick that beam routine, you know. And so it's just... For me, it's one of my harder events. Okay. Anyone else have a different event that, uh, that the beam isn't? <laughs> I'd have to say bars because, as Diane mentioned, it takes a lot of strength, and that's something that you don't always want to work on. And um, also, like, it hurts your hands when you go on bars and you rip your skin, <laughs> and it just really starts to build up after a while. And um, we all try to take good care of our hands so we don't rip. But it doesn't always work out that way, so I have to say bars is my least favorite. <laughs> okay. And some, someone else? Yes, Anne. Um, just what Nina said about the um, hands, taking care of your hands. Uh, that was something I forgot to mention about it. CCS. I'd had two um, pretty severe rips on my hands earlier, and that's another thing that really adds to the stress of doing bars because um, your hands will start bleeding in a routine or, you know, they'll just, they'll just ache and it's very difficult to hold on when you have hands that hurt that much. Okay. So. Okay. Anyone else have a different uh, one from it, Well, it's not, it's not <laughs> a different event, it's BEAM. And I think, I mean, BEAM is our best event, uh, believe it or not. But, you know, when you get up there, like warm ups may go really bad and then so you never know what's going to happen in, you know, in the actual competition. So it's kind of, if there's always this, you know, it's a 50-50 chance either you make it or you're going to bail hard. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth. <laughs> but anyway, I, it's, I don't know, I always feel like I'm shaking, like when I, I watch myself doing the routine. And then when I go back and watch the videotape when I get home, it's not like that at all. And so it's kind of like I'm kind of fooling myself, I guess, sometimes when I'm up there. But. Let me ask Coach Gibbs a question then, uh, Rachel, based on what you said. Is it any accident that, uh, that the beam happens to be, or that any given event happens to be a team's best event? Is that a matter of, don't be immodest? And, and by the way, it's probably time to say that Coach Gibbs has been honored as a CCS Coach of the Year, and I uh, meant to say that in your introduction. Congratulations for that. Uh, don't be modest. Uh, is it a coaching emphasis, or does it have to do with particular physical strengths of a team? or? Help us I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have one event that I feel is my strongest coaching. They may have a different opinion, but um, we spend a lot of time on beam. It's the one event that we have. We have three beams in the gym, and they're never really empty. Um, but to say that your best event is beam is really saying a lot because that's usually people's worst event, and it's usually yes. a make or break. Yes. And when it came down to the league finals and we had to get a certain score on beam, I felt a lot better than if it was bars or vault because <coughs> I knew we could do it. And uh, we did it and then some, so it was nice that we ended on beam. Yeah. And is that a tough moment uh, when, uh, when we slip and we tumble off and we have to get back up and pretend as if... I don't know why you asked Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Jen. Yeah. <laughs> Jen, you're the resident expert, apparently. Well, she, she had one of the more interesting falls on beam, but she saved it pretty good. <laughs> we can forget about tell that. Us about, tell us about it, Jen. While we're here. My routines, <laughs> yeah. like, or the one beam routine. The Let's one. Let's about the one. The, okay. the mother of all beam routines. Well, <laughs> this was Scavals. Um, I was the very last competitor. Everyone else in the whole gym was done. And beam is the slowest event, probably, with floor. And everyone was done. We're the last, very, very last team. And and it was down to, like, the very end where the scores really counted. It was close with Leland and St. Francis. Very, very close. Like, tenth of a points difference. And, um, 
I remember being really nervous because I was last and everything. And I got out, and actually I found out that we were going to do okay. So it was it was kind of nice to know before I went on the beam that my score was not the end of the world. <laughs> bike. And um, so I got up, I was, I was doing my routine, and I actually remember feeling pretty com- pretty confident. I didn't feel too shaky. And <laughs> and I just, I remember finishing my, I have a part of my routine is my two back walkovers, which is, for me, is the scariest thing. I'm always really nervous. And I just, I finished my back walkers, and I, I stuck it, and I was really, really happy. And so I'm doing my scale, which is not something that no one ever falls on, and it's really basic. It's just a scale. And I was thinking really hard what my next uh, skill was, and um and then suddenly my foot or something, I don't, I wasn't off balance, I just completely fell, and I just, Shroud the beam, but I, <laughs> but I didn't fall off. I didn't fall off. I just kind of got my act together and just <laughs> continued my routine. And I, so I stuck it in a way you could say I stuck it. I never actually fell off. And I, so I did pretty well. I had one of my best scores. <laughs> but, but that's a nightmare that we've all had. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has to go through it. We do have a caller. And so, uh, Eric, uh, your question or your statement, please. Yeah, uh, me and my friends were watching the show and we were wondering how sports has affected your social interaction with other students? Okay. <laughs> the question was from Eric was how your, uh, your sports have uh, affected your social interaction. Uh, and and I, I do want to talk a little bit about the routine that things go in, but uh, do you have an answer to that, uh, anyone off the top of your head? Yeah. Rachel? Um, I don't think it affects our social life that much. I think there's not that much going on after school. It is hard to balance your homework and stuff. I think it is a lot harder um, when doing club gymnastics. It was a lot harder then because you're doing more of it, and I remember that was a problem, and that's why I quit club gymnastics. But I think with um, gymnastics at school, it's kind of a social thing anyway. You're with your friends, and you're having fun there, too. So yeah. so it, it works in both ways. I think it's not a problem. <laughs> uh, Eric, any follow-up question uh, to that? <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Anyone else have a comment? I'm sure Eric is still listening. Yeah, Anybody else with me? Yeah. Um, I agree with Rachel about the um, social interaction thing. When I was in club gymnastics, it took up a lot of my time, and I couldn't do anything else after school. But in high school gymnastics, it doesn't take up quite so much time, and you're always with your friends at school, so it's not so bad. Good. I do want to ask a question about the, the club gymnastics and the time, uh, but let's have another clip. Uh, we're okay. enjoying your expert commentary, Diane. <laughs> and uh, let's see, next up is uh, Rachel Allen uh, on the bars. Yes. And uh, so, <laughs> Coach, if you tell us, please. Well, this is a very dynamic routine. I was very proud of Rachel. No. That's not. That's Nina. Nina. Whoops. Okay. Nina's getting oh. ready to do what they call a straddle cut. She's letting go of the bar twice in a row, which is pretty hard to do, and it's hard to get out of that. And she does a what we call flyaway dismount, which just about everybody does <laughs> because it's a superior move and it's also what they call a salto or a flip. So you have to get that in your routine um, somewhere. So the dismount is the easiest place to do that. Good. I'm sorry, Nina. That, that <laughs> was, uh, uh, it's hard um, to tell who's going. <laughs> yes. uh, Nina, any comment you have watching that? Well, I wasn't very pleased with that routine. It wasn't my best one, but I didn't fall, and I was happy with that, and I had had a really bad warm-up on that event, so I was kind of nervous, but I guess I had stops, you know, and that always takes away from the performance as a whole, even though it's not that big of a deduction. Um, it just seems like it's less uh, connected, the whole thing. And I guess, you know, I was, it was a medium routine. You know, it wasn't my best, and it wasn't my worst. Good. Looked okay to me, but uh, <laughs> don't you look with the more discerning, discerning eye. Um, it's almost a cliche, I think, in, uh, in sports. One of sports cliches is the, the burned out gymnast. At the age of 16, a person <coughs> never wants to see a gymnasium again. Mm-hmm. And I gather that's not the case with this team. And the word fun was actually mentioned, I think, when the girls described <laughs> your workouts. <laughs> and, uh, could, could we, and several of you have mentioned uh, you were doing club but cut out the club. Yeah. Do you want to talk about uh, just uh, what does gymnastics like mean to you in the total <laughs> picture? I, I, think, I think that's the <laughs> yeah. question. Um, Do you want to begin, Jan? Well, club gymnastics is definitely a lot different than gun because I did club gymnastics when I was in like sixth grade in elementary school for a little while. And I remember it was, a, I mean, it was like a military. We had to line up in order and you had to like march from each. <laughs> 
went from each event, and we had, you know, the coach would be like, drop 100 push-ups, and it was just very strenuous. It was really, I don't know, I guess it kind of did not make it fun. It was, you know, each day, it was you'd get nervous before practice, and that was probably about three hours of practice a day, and then the summer, it was like four and a half hours. And so I think a, a gymnast that does, does it that seriously is definitely going to get more burned out than our team, because we, we're not that serious at all. I mean... Okay, and Bo, do you want to add to that? Yeah, um, well, I think most of us, like, most of us did club gymnastics together, and it was fun at times, but I remember dreading to go just to practice, and I don't know, it, it's not really worth it when your coaches, I, I remember coming home from practice crying because I was in so much pain, or I, the pressure just got to me, and it, it takes a lot of time a lot of energy and a lot of money. <laughs> so it's not always worth it. <laughs> so why isn't the pressure as great uh, competing in, uh, at Gun High School and in the CCS? Well, I mean, there's not, there's not as many meets. I mean, we have practice every day, but, you know, it's, it's like two and a half or two hours. It's not nearly as much. And I guess it's, I mean, it's, we work, you know, otherwise we wouldn't have gotten to where we were. But um, we, you know, we're, we're allowed to be, on whatever event we want, we don't have to rotate as a team, and you know it's a lot more free. If you have to go home, you know at five o'clock, if practice started at four, to do homework because you have a lot of homework that night, it's not a problem with anyone. So, and also, I guess because the meet season wasn't as long, like we knew before exactly how many meets we were going to have, and it didn't, you know, it it didn't drag on like it sometimes does in club. Okay, good. We do have a caller. I want to tune, uh, Rachel, we'll come back to you in just a minute. Steve, uh, you're on the line. Question, please. Um, hi, Bo. This is Steve. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of exercises do you guys do to get so limber? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Bo, you want to? Okay, well, I, I stretch out, like, all the time. And a lot of us, like, I know we stretch out in front of the TV. We'll do the splits. And I, I do a lot of... <laughs> stomach exercises because that helps a lot on bars and just on everything. I, I don't know. I, I whenever I'm bored, I exercise. <laughs> I, I also have like a trampoline at home, so I'll jump on that and anything that'll keep me in shape, I'll do. All right. Anyone else on this matter of staying limber, stretching things? I. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, this is a funny experience. I was sitting on the couch one day and my brother and I were kind of you know pushing each other around, and he took my leg and just pushed it. And to a regular person, it's supposed to hurt when you get past, you know, a 45 degree angle. And he kept pushing, he said, Rachel, that's supposed <coughs> to hurt. <laughs> and, I mean, I guess it's, it's, and sometimes it's an advantage when, you know, you're uh, wrestling with your family or, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you're doing. But, like uh, plastic man. I mean, if, you do, if you're stretching every day at, and during warm ups, that's what keeps you limber and being able to do whatever you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much for the questions, Steve. Keep those questions coming, please. Uh, our number is 856-1491. Let's look at another uh, clip, Coach, if we will. This time, uh, maybe I'd ask Rachel. Uh, this is Rachel Allen on the bars. This is the one I skipped over. And Rachel, would you mind commenting, please, uh, on well, this one? Then I'd ask your coach to, to add to the commentary. So here we are on the monitor. Maybe not. <laughs> or we will be on the monitor in just a second. Oh, I did a kip mount, a basic thing, and I did a front sole circle, which is a good way to, you know, grip change. And here I, is where I had to, you know, keep myself motivated, because that was one of the moves that I didn't do well at all my meets. And the, this is my dismount, basic flyaway salto, like Diane said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some of that, uh, that team spirit we talked about yeah. with the, uh, the embracing afterward. <laughs> and uh, Coach, forgive me for even suggesting such a thing, but uh, that kind of thing would never be done to influence a judge, would it? Uh, the, uh, <laughs> enthusiasm. I can't imagine that a, a uh, former uh, judge or referee would, would even suggest that to her team. Well, I, actually, I still judge, and I judge with every single judge that was in the room, so maybe that's an unfair advantage. I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, why not? We, we do whatever we can, and if we were going to cheer and scream, actually, I had every right to because that was Rachel's best routine all year, and she really deserved every bit of that score. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because Rachel's so modest, tell, tell, us, well, tell, us what you like, tell us what you like about that. that oh, uh, she didn't stop. Um, she has a hard time sometimes stopping before her dismount, and I'm always on her case about it. And <laughs> it was nice to see her do it, and her straddle back, which is the element she went from the high bar to the low bar, 
was giving her some problems and she did it without a, without a problem at all and she had hardly any execution so I was real happy with that yeah, routine. That, that was a pretty nine, 965 was the score. That was that, Rachel uh, Allen. That was a 915. Oh, sorry, 915. Yeah. Get my, read my notes. And that, <laughs> remember I said a 7 was a good score so a 9 yes, is yes, yes. pretty nice. <laughs> Pretty nice. Well, uh, before we have some more callers, let's talk about a, uh, a typical workout. It isn't, uh, as with any sport, of course, it isn't the finished uh, finish product. And I'm sure our viewers would be interested to know what goes on by way of strength. We've talked about some agility, stretching things. Give us, uh, give us some of the behind the scenes thing. Diane, either if you want to talk or uh, if the girls. I, I'd like to hear what they think a typical workout is because we don't really have one. I don't care. Go okay. ahead, Rachel. And let's, uh, let's start with the end of them. Uh, Go to I guess on a, um, a realistic workout day, we come in and um, <laughs> start sort of warming up and gossiping and just kind of talking about stuff and stretching out until coaches come. And, um, you know, once the coaches come, we'll, we'll start actually getting into practice. And we do, um, we do actually get a lot of work done most of the time. Um, it's, it's sometimes kind of difficult because we do have a large team and there are only four events and only one per person can really on most of the events be on there at a time. So um, it there is a lot of waiting involved, but during that time, you know, I know me and several other people have picked up um, nicknames and, and <laughs> things like that. And we just, you know, you just get to know everyone a lot better just, just hanging around practice and stuff. And it's, um, it is work and we, you know, we do condition and strengthen at the end and stuff. But um, overall we're, you know, we're talking a pretty, you know, usually a pretty, um, you know, not relaxing, but, you know, loose workout. There's not a lot of, you know, as opposed to, like, club gymnastics where you're, you know, like Bo was saying, nervous to go to gymnastics. I mean, that's definitely not the case. So. Uh, is there work with weights, Coach? Do we, uh, uh, we have a weight room, but it's not open late <coughs> enough for us to really take full advantage of it. There's been days where I've been by myself and I can only be in one room, so I will send them to the weight room. And, and actually, a lot of them really enjoy it. I wish we could use weights more, but... We do a lot more conditioning that's floor exercises and that kind of thing, and it's mostly what we do. What else would a, a person uh, not a gymnast? Interrupt just a minute. Uh, we have Shannon on the line. Uh, Shannon, go ahead, please. Hi. Um, Ann had said earlier that you all have nicknames. I mean, I know hers is Ann Darjean Plus. So I was wondering what are other people's <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. Um, <laughs> nice to hear from you. Um, <laughs> Well, let's see. Um, should I go around and tell everyone's nickname? Or oh, yeah, definitely. My nickname changes every night. Yeah, that's well, true. We do. We have a lot of different nicknames. I've been nicknamed. Um, <laughs> the big one is Anne the Man, and that's kind of a long story. I don't think I'll go into it, but um, that came from a friend of mine from swimming, and he kind of um, got it onto the team here. And we've, there's just, I mean, every day, like, some little incident will come up, and you just kind of get a nickname attached, and... Um, you know, sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. So, but everyone has a, a couple. I'm sure Bo knows about that too. <laughs> Anyone else have a nickname you'd care to share with us, Shelly? Well, they call us Shen and Jelly because we're already together. Shen and Jelly. <laughs> or Diane calls us that. I never get their names right. That's, yeah. that's cute. And some other ones. Anyone else? Shen and Jelly. Well, we. <laughs> <laughs> we well, Nina is usually Nina. Just because. Yeah. <laughs> because there's Mina on the team and it gets confusing. Yeah. Mina and Nina. And then if all else fails, you can always say Rachel because there are two of them. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Prime. Okay. Thank you, caller, for that, Shannon. Uh, let's look at our next tape. Now, this is the 965. This is uh, Rachel Hopkins. And uh, so, once again, when Coach Gibbs says any score over a seven, uh, we'd be pleased with, uh, we must be very, very pleased with this one. And um, Rachel, do you want to do the honors for us, please, and tell us, sure. and then we'll ask your coach what okay. you Okay. Like. That was a, this is my um, <laughs> soul circle where I always miss. That's a free up to sort of handstand. <laughs> <laughs> this is a jam, which a lot of people do. And then I try to do a layout fly, always a little pike. But, but she cast a handstand. <coughs> yeah. It's, most people don't cast a handstand, and so... That's one of the things we did like every single day at clubs, so I've kind of carried that over. So, so you were obviously pleased with that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that um, soul circle over thing I never make, and at Scavels I think I barely skinned my legs on the floor, but on CCS I think I had them about six inches, so that was really exciting. <laughs> Good. And coach, what would you add to that? Uh, having looked at that again. Well, that was about the fourth routine that we tried with Rachel. We kept trying <laughs> different things because the soul circle half 
turn over the low bar was giving her problems and actually one day I was late to practice on a Friday and she kind of came later than I did and I was there by myself and I said she said well should we practice and I said okay private lessons and that's all we worked on and we try to <laughs> analyze it and figure out why she was having problems with it and actually we kind of figured it out together and it was really worth me being there and her coming late so Good. it worked so out well. <laughs> one of those great coachable coaching moments. Yeah uh, I think so. We had fun too. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, can we get back to the practice regimen? What's, uh, what's um, anything again that you dread about practices? Is there a favorite, a favorite part? Mm -hmm. Well it's not something that I dread right. but I just <laughs> I just wanted to point out that we came into practice on January 4th, the day we came back from winter vacation. And I think realistically we weren't supposed to start until the end of February or something like that. And I think that really, really helped us during the year um, was to, to be working out for a longer time than the other teams. Um, and it just gave us a chance to get our routines together so we had more time to finalize them and fine tune. Okay, great. And I want to come back to that. Let's look at the dreaded beam, uh, Coach, if we can. <laughs> this is Bo Schnitz um, uh, on the beam routine. And uh, so would you, Coach, uh, tell us about this, and then we'll have Bo add. Well, she has a pretty basic mount, but it's, I think, a nice mount. She so kind of won't fall off on she it. She fell out <laughs> she's at league finals on this, which I think she's never fallen all season. Bo's really gotten um, some good amplitude on beam, which is how high you get on your leaps or your jumps. And that was a free scale, which is worth a superior. And she just started adding towards the end of the season her back walkovers because her back's been giving her problems. But you'll see me standing there in the middle of the routine to help her out. And this is what they call a plunge. It's a strength move. And this is actually a high superior, so it's worth a lot. And there's me. <laughs> and I don't do anything. I just stand there, I think, for moral support. Uh, moral support. <laughs> I don't really do much in meets except just stand there. So I'm just kind of walking along the beam. Here we go. <laughs> just save that one. <laughs> yeah. They have to do an acrobatic series, two elements back to back, and then an acrobatic and a gymnastic series together. And those are both superior jumps back to back. We all know that word. <laughs> back to back. <laughs> Those give you bonus points usually. Yes. And then a superior dismount, which is called a branny. And a very good score considering there was a fall in there, but it looked it like it was edited, edited out. out. <laughs> yeah, which is the nice thing about television. Uh, if we can do that uh, live, we have a real dynasty. There's yeah, without, really. Without question. Nice. Okay, we're going. Bo, do you want to comment on, uh, on the, the routine as you now want Well, to? I was pretty much pleased with it, but. I mean, it was an average routine. I've had better routines before. I mean, with the fall, it, it was a good score, but I try not to look at scores just because they don't, they're not always consistent, depending on the judge. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was pretty happy with it. I mean, I, I didn't fall off on my back walkovers, and I didn't fall off on my mount, <laughs> which I usually don't, but I was pretty pleased with it. Good. Now, I want to make sure we get a lot, there's a lot of wonderful clips. So I want to make sure we okay. move along a little bit more quickly. So perhaps we'll, uh, we'll intersperse questions as they uh, get the clips ready for us. I, I do want, before we're done this evening, to ask each of you uh, to think back on this uh, championship season. It's one you remember all of your lives, I assure you. And uh, maybe think of a highlight, a high point in the season for you. Um, so if you'd be thinking about that before we're done, I'd like to hear that. <laughs> um, our next clip is uh, Shelley Bryan on the beam. Uh, and this was an 8.90. And so, uh, Shelly, do you want to come in, please? Uh, All right. Shelly? <coughs> well, I do. Um, I don't know. It's a jump squat arm. And I've been scared of that move before. <laughs> and here I'm preparing for my back walkovers. And it's key to connect the back walkovers to get um, full points. And here I try to connect it into two pike jumps. And um, here's, again, I do a plunge, and that's like Bo did earlier. And you want to show a 45 degree angle. I don't know if I did. And I come down, <laughs> and I'm just getting back. You have to go down on the beam, so that's um, important to do. And here I'm preparing for my leaps. I do two leaps in a row. <laughs> and. Here I do a scale. <laughs> and
and you're supposed you have to hold it for two seconds and um, hold turn and I do two systems together or well there I wobbled in between so. <coughs> and I do branny dismount which I stuck <laughs> good now what was that a dismount called branny and what does that mean exactly um well, it's Sorry. like <laughs> no, no. it's a car. It's, like, it's a round off with no hands. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, it's a now a back and back to back means repetition of, and that's not that, mandated. Is that an option? That is mandated. They have to have two back to back superiors in the routine, and anything above and beyond that is what they call bonus. So we really emphasize back to back superiors. At the beginning of the season, they they give me a hard time because they're sick of hearing about it, but towards the end, they finally figure out that's how they get the bonuses to do extra back to back superiors. I see. Okay. I think the next routine, uh, it's, uh, this is Jackie uh, up next, and uh, Jackie, I'd like you to comment, but uh, could you maybe, as a judge, would look at it? Uh, we've done a little bit of this, but uh, tell us where, as a judge, I'd be thinking points on, or is it, uh, is it points off? Uh, very fundamental question for mm -hmm. a neophyte. Uh, do we theoretically start with a, a score of 10 and then no. detract as we go? No. <laughs> Not in high school. They have to build up to their score. They have to have uh, four medium elements, which would be maybe a cartwheel or a basic full turn. They have to have three um, superior elements, which would be maybe a, a straddle jump or that brandy dismount. And then also they need to have one high superior. And in that routine, they must have certain event requirements like an acrobatic series, which is two, say, tumbling uh, requirements put together, um, a gymnastic series, which is two, gym, two uh, dance series, two elements put together, a combination of the two, they have to do a full turn. They have to do a, a balance or a scale. There's all kinds of requirements. And then from there, they start at a 9-5 if they do all that. After that, they can get bonus by doing <coughs> extra back-to-back -back superiors, extra high superiors, and doing a routine that's considered to be dynamic or doing an element that's really exceptional. So they're not really starting at a 10. And <coughs> out of the six routines we did at CCS, we only had two falls, which is exceptional. Good. Let's look Very at Jackie good. and if you would tell us then please coach uh, just what the requirements are being met by okay. each of the moves perhaps. Okay. So here's Jackie Pratt. Well I think she just did her mount which is a superior. Two back walkovers in a row is her acrobatic series and a superior. Plus she connects a pike jump which gives her what we call a mixed series and a back to back to back. <laughs> so it really is a good combination. Um, she's doing her scale. She's showing a 180 split. And this then is the part that I often fall on, so I'm very nervous when I do this because, like, I've just finished my scale and I'm feeling very confident for not falling off the beam, and I just sit down on the beam and fall off. <laughs> <laughs> it's been known to happen before, huh, Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> Now she's doing her <coughs> leaps, which are, if they're at hip level and they're split, they're considered to be superiors. She's doing what's called a ring leap, where her back leg needs to be at the height of her head. And those are very difficult to do because you can't really see the beam. Those are, it's an extra back-to-back. -back. And there's her superior dismount, which is another branny. Wonderful. And now, uh, Jen, uh, Jackie was a replacement, yeah, was she not, yeah, from, yeah. for uh, Jen, so again, illustrates the point about the depth, uh, well, stepping into last minute. I'll take an 8-9 for my, for my alternate, yeah, that's yes, pretty nice. <laughs> yes, indeed, yeah. indeed. Do you want to add, uh, Jackie, anything to that, uh, to what Coach has said about um, that particular? And thank you, by the way, for, and that's probably the best way to do it, uh, if you feel free to comment while we're doing this, okay. I think, I, why mm -hmm. didn't I think of that? Uh, Jackie, <laughs> what would you add to that? Well, uh, the routine, my beam routine was much better than anything I'd ever done. And I got an 8-9 on it, which is a record for me. And um, I used to not be very good at beam early in the earlier meets in the season. And suddenly, like in the last three meets, I improved dramatically on beam. So that was, I was happy about that. Good, and came through in a, in a tough spot oh, yeah. to, for the, to help the beam out, <laughs> wonderful. Let's look, uh, let's look at Nino also on the beam. This is an 8.35. And um, so, uh, once again, let's do it. Uh, Nina, feel free, please, to comment. And I'd ask Diane to add some things. Let's look at it. It's hard to see. Oh, she just did her mount. It was a free V6, <coughs> which is also a superior. She's going to do a very basic full turn, which is a requirement. 
doing your two back walkovers. Right. Pretty much everyone did that. And then sure. that, that leap is one that I put in very late in the season um, just to get bonus points, but it was a late addition. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, oh we show you scale. It's hard to see. <laughs> Saying leap and then two, two straddle jumps, which again are all superiors. We had a team one time say, how do you guys get such great leaps on beam? Here it comes. <laughs> She's going to do an aerial cartwheel here, which is a cartwheel with no oh, hands. I don't and, <laughs> and I was really disappointed to fall off on that. Very but. upset. Did you almost <laughs> nail it, Nina? Did you feel? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. She was close. I'm superstitious, and I had a good warm-up, so I thought that I was going to have a bad routine. But. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's uh, a wonderful move, and what a shame that uh, you lost it right at the end. We have a caller. Uh, Nate, you're on the air, please. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, is substance abuse a big problem at Gun High School? All right, now the, the, now, the steroid, <laughs> now the steroid story comes out. I don't, I don't hear what he said. Substance, is substance oh, abuse. Oh, substance abuse. I have a <coughs> well, I know there are a lot of people at our school who do it, but I mean, most of us are so involved in our sports that it's not really worth it. I mean, I don't think any of us would do it anyways. It's just stupid, especially like to throw away everything that you work for all season. It's not worth it. Anybody else want to add to that? Or maybe says it all. But Nina, do you want to add something? The caller's still there. What does that have to do with gymnastics? I mean, <laughs> a gun, substance abuse, I don't understand <laughs> the, the connection. <laughs> well, uh, perhaps a question with, uh, with athletics in general. Uh, certainly, uh, I probably tends to, well, I won't say a higher incidence, but there tends to be a higher incidence often. Um, um, I'd say among athletes that there's a probably a lower incidence because, as both said, we're probably more careful because, you know, we don't want to throw it away. I mean, it, there was a lot of jokes about it. I mean, like, oh, are you sure I can take an aspirin before CCS or <laughs> I can do a drug test? But, you know, I don't really think that we do. All right, so the expose is here tonight on Interact Aspirin taken by the uh -huh. gun team, remember the gun team prior to the CCS Actually, and you heard it here first. Well, our next beam routine is uh, Rachel uh, Allen, and uh, this was a, a 9.2. And so, uh, <coughs> Rachel, together, and uh, Coach, if you would, please, uh, the Good narration. Advice. This is the, the killer mount here. Yeah, I have battle wounds from this on my leg. Many bruises. Uh -oh. She jumps to a free split. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I pretty much just stand there for, again, moral support. Yeah. This is a Valdez, which is a superior. It's a very difficult move on beam. You know, this whole time, like during my scale, I'm, it, I'm really concentrating on my next elements. Kind of like I have to visualize it <laughs> in my head before I go, and it's kind of. I mean, during warms, my co Diane always stands there just for I don't know why, but she just stands there. Because <laughs> you make me. <laughs> but in competition, she doesn't need a spot on that yeah. at all. And back walkovers, like everybody else does, you know, connecting. Like them. check out the split in these legs. Yikes. Bad example, Diane. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that was better. There you yeah. go. Now, what was wrong with the first one? <laughs> it was a little crooked. She has some body alignment problems sometimes on her walkovers. <laughs> that was when you're flexible. I'm sorry. She kind of goes crooked, and, but she okay. always manages to stay on. Mm -hmm. And, and 9.2, we're not going to sneeze at, are we? Not at all. She must have started at a 10 or she, close to uh, it. That would have been nice. Basic leaps like everybody does. Ooh. Save that one. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm getting ready for my dismount. She does a different dismount, which is Yay. cartwheel Cart back, back, not the brain that you've been seeing. Mm -hmm. Diane was a little happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy that she stuck her mount and that yeah. she stuck First her time routine. season. <laughs> so uh, there are, within, even within a given event, there are particular problem areas that, uh, that individual gymnasts would have, but the, the mount, let's say. Yeah, there's certain things that they may fall on more or that they've been experiencing some problems with, but um, it was just nice to see them do so well in an event that is typically a downfall of a team. Usually they'll have a lot of problems with beam, and we don't seem to have that. Like I said, two falls out of six kids is it's pretty amazing. <laughs> and Rachel, is it a real boost to do something, the mountain, let's say right at the beginning of the routine, that, that you're maybe anticipating? Is that, does it give you a little rush? And yeah, 
It's I, I always put like my harder elements, so the things I want to get out of the way at the beginning of the routine, so I don't have to be worried about being tired or towards the end. And um, I know that my mount was the thing I worried about the most this, for about half the season. It was a, it was a new mount during the middle of the season, which I did, and so there was always that worry. Oh no, am I going to make it? Because often my back leg would you know go flying off the beam. <laughs> so. But you, you, you can't really worry too much about the problem. I mean, that, w that would be almost uh, self-fulfilling prophecy, wouldn't it? It doesn't matter just <coughs> blot blotting out your worries or fears? Yeah, I mean, once I fall, I kind of have to put it behind me. But when I make it and when I know I've tried really hard, it always kind of gives me that extra, okay, Rachel, you did it. you got to move on and do the rest of your routine well. Great, okay. Well, let's look at a 9.4 routine, uh, the last beam routine today, Rachel. And first place, I might Hopkins, add. And first place <laughs> in the CCS. So, Rachel, please, if you'd comment along with your coach. Okay. Pretty standard mount, but it's a superior. Rachel had no, absolutely no um, execution on this routine. Nice leaps. It's really nice to see that she does well in a, an event that she's considered her worst. At least that's it what is. she says. <laughs> and watch these pike jumps. Nope, that's a Sassone. Sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, this is the old thing I used to fall on. We took the spin Again, on because yeah. I always used to fall on it. She's required, required to go down to the beam. These are my pike jumps. These are pike jumps, which if she did these in clubs, she would get a lot of bonus for. Her. She's really showing compact body position, doing a scale, which is a requirement too, and a full turn, which is a requirement and tends to give a lot of the gymnast problems. Getting ready for my disarm. Did the same one that Rachel does, cartwheel back. Uh, okay. Very nice. That's a nine, nine, nine. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, as the rest of you watch, is there something in that routine you say, gosh, if someday I'm going to be able to do that if I keep working at it. Is it does there something come out of that? Pike jumps. <laughs> Pike jumps. Okay. Anybody else see something that you, you think, wow, I, I, that's something. I just. Like, I just think her overall like solidness. She she she's just on the whole time. <laughs> we all admire it. <laughs> well, wonderful, wonderful. Well, our time's running a little bit short. I I think we would like to look at a little bit of the floor routine, and sure. uh, we actually have some sound in the music. And uh, although I think we still could uh, comment over, uh, let's see. We have uh, we have Nina to start with. Um, <coughs> let's maybe uh, look at that and see how our time comes along. We have another caller maybe. This is the part I always get teased about. <laughs> it's a little prep for a tumbling path. This is the same pass I'd had all season, so I was really used to it. Popa. Popa. <laughs> it's a move that I put in at the end of the season. It was just. This was a new pass that I put in just for this meet. Call an Arabian with the tuck with a half twist. What we pass, what you I have to have. Is, I think this is my favorite as a spectator. To most, it is most people's yeah, favorite event to watch because yeah, of the music yeah, and everything. It's very graceful and, and yet athletic as well. Last pass, you're really tired by now, so just try to take it easy for the last pass. And the ending, which we've had a lot of problems with for a long I time. I had trouble getting with the music on the end, and that is a, a deduction that you can get as musicality. It's not staying with the music on floor, so it's not just a backup. It's something that you have to concentrate on. Okay, and, and stamina does become very much an issue in the, in the floor. Yes. Oh, we, yeah. We find ourselves... <laughs> we have this thing called suck and air, which is we do, all season we do two routines right back to back, back to back. We do two routines <laughs> right next to each other to build up our endurance so we're not um, breathing really hard suck in air during a, during a competition. Okay. Uh, we do want to watch the team awards since we're here to celebrate the CCS <laughs> championships. And so we will go. Uh, we have, it's not quite ready yet. Let me ask the question, please, uh, ladies, that I ask you to think about highlight of the season, the, the highlight as you think back to a particular moment that you think you'll, uh, you'll take with you a long, long time, Rachel? Definitely winning CCS. I mean, we, we, all, we all knew we could do it, and it was a matter of just staying together as a team because we, we did watch many, te many teams have so many injury, injuries at this meet. 
it was a matter of you know staying concentrated and focused on what we were doing as a team, and not to get sidetracked. And I think that was definitely a big, big highlight of the season. Mm -hmm. It was one way to you know top it off. Good. So. And I, I will comment about that because Rachel was here on her freshman year. We barely <laughs> made it to CCS. Then last year we got fourth. So we're she's been around when we were pretty lean, <laughs> and Bo. <laughs> okay. Someone else before we get to, to look at the uh, CCS awards. Think of a highlight. Is it the CCS finals for all of you? Mm -hmm. Yes, Jackie? Uh, yeah, for me too, the CCS was definitely the most exciting because um, <laughs> Let's Go Vowels, um, which was the meet before that, we knew that we had won before the awards ceremony. But at CCS, nobody was keeping track, so we didn't know who had won. Some people knew. Some people knew. <laughs> we tried not to let it out too much. Okay. Well, let's and go to the team awards, and we can comment if you'd like. Uh, Jackie, I have to cut you off. Uh, in fact, uh, Jackie, help us here as we uh, tell us what's going on, and, and the rest of you too, please. We knew that we were going to be somewhere in the top three. Yeah. Two. <laughs> but we'd been watching Actually, all the teams. I knew because my mom's like the official score yeah. creature, yeah. <laughs> and she always calculates everything and along with both of them. All the moms sit together and they do it together. So it was we just really, here. really, was really sure. exciting. Yeah, we were happy here because Gilroy, we've been working out with them, and they got fourth, so we were happy for them. Yeah, it's really Scores nice. Scores were really high. Yeah, Saint it's Francis. really nice to like uh, work out with a team that you get along with so well. And Gilroy is um, a lot of them are so. Friendly to be around. It's really nice when you're good friends with other teams because it, you know. We want to hear this. This is definitely where we knew we had <laughs> taken it. It was, it was, it was good. All right, so and let's, they, let's listen. <laughs> we were happy. We had to carry Jen up to the the one that has it. Here we come. <laughs> Well, that's, that's quite a moment. Coach, what were you feeling at uh, and uh, shortly after? And I think you might have heard it announced that, uh, that Diane was named CCS Coach of the Year at that moment, and that we didn't probably hear it. What were your feelings at that time? Well, I've been with this team for four years, and every year we get a little closer. And uh, it was what I felt really right then and there was this was the team that really deserved it. Out of everyone there, I felt like they worked the hardest. They were the most team-oriented. And I was just really proud of them. And I was, I was happy for myself, too, but I was really, really excited for them. And, of course, I was going nuts, and they were embarrassed. But <laughs> and, I, and I think they were, too. Well, Coach, congratulations on a wonderful, wonderful season. Thank you. And it's um, been fun. Once, once again, I, and I hope we're, you're in our future at Gunn High School for a long time. But well, we'll, I... we'll see about that. Ladies, congratulations on a wonderful season. Thank you. You're, uh, you're not only wonderful performers, but uh, it's a delight to talk to such articulate people and, uh, and such pleasant people. Thank you very much. And thank all of you for joining us at uh, Interact.